I kind of melted the uh, tips of my socks yesterday at the fire. So I had to cut off the burnt parts because they were really rough feeling. But it left a huge hole and I thought it would slide down and chafe here. So I kind of did this temporary thing until I get some new ones. Not the best job, but hey, it should hold. Pretty sure. Don't melt your socks. Day 65, it's a little before 5 a.m. Woke up early so we can get out Kearsarge Pass today and check out my tent covered in ice and snow. Hope it's not worse up higher because we're below 10,000 feet right now. Just a little below. Day 65, we're going up. We're not even above 10,000 yet. Everything's all iced over. It's uh, it's crazy. And it's a rough climb. And as we look up, we can see our stairs all iced over. Lots more to go. Good morning, day 65. This is how you eat a Snickers bar in the morning in the high Sierra Mountains. No way is two hands for this. Uh-huh. Well then. Bullfrog Lake. Beautiful. It's still snowing a little bit and we are in the clouds. The sun's trying to come out, but... A lot of times we get stuck in these climbs and we just focus on the climb and we don't look around at all, but look at this part of the climb. Bullfrog Lake from high. I did stop and look back and it's pretty. I'll overlay a photo of it so you know, to get, watch my face. My hair's growing in pretty well though, huh? Day 65. Kearsarge Pass today. We're about probably less than five miles away from it. Uh, I don't know how much elevation we're going to have to go down and up, but then the independence and uh, package. Unfortunately, the pa post office closed on Saturday, Sunday. So I have to wait till Monday for the package. But what are you going to do? We'll come back Monday morning. This is Bullfrog Lake. Look how misty it is. They're trying to grow back some of the plants down there, so we don't want to walk down there. But yeah, nice. Here's the trail going to Kearsarge Pass, and yeah, there's snow covering it. But that's not the worst of it. Look. It's basically a pond. You could just make it out going right through the middle. Way up. I like to see someone be a true purist and walk right through that. That's a lot of water. Here's an interesting phenomenon most people probably don't realize. See how that part sticks out? I think because the footstep compacts the snow, turns it to ice and makes it harder so the snow melts quicker than the ice. So you get these like inverted footprints come up. It's pretty interesting. You can see some over here. Pretty funny. Let's see if anybody else has noticed that before. <laughs> We're heading towards Kearsarge Pass and we're trying to guess where the pass is. I see a trail there. So let's go all the way up. Well, let's switch back. So I'm not thinking there. Maybe there. I know people who've done it before are like, you're wrong. But uh, it's fun to guess. I hope it's thereabouts because there's not much snow up there. <laughs> so that is Kearsarge Lake down there. Seems like there's three of them connected with beautiful mountains in the back. Clouds in the right, and there's the valley where we came from. Urgh, don't want to go down there.
it, folks. Uh, approaching the west, there's hardly any snow at all. We lucked out. Looks like going the other way, there's 15 feet of snow. Two people are saying no micro spikes needed. She seems pretty confident. I haven't taken a look yet, but from here, it's like, ooh. <laughs> now it'll be all right. Or there'll be no more videos. Bro, this looks sketchy. <laughs> but as soon as you step onto the snow, it's the trail. I thought we were gonna have to like, walk on the side of the snow for miles again. This is the range we went over and down, way below. It's a beautiful lake. You could just make out the edges. Blue, but it's, we're just clocked in, socked in in clouds though. Can't see much at all. You can make out the blue. Look how beautiful the edges of that lake look. That's where the snow from the mountain side just meets the edges. It's beautiful. I'm gonna include a picture of this, but look at this basin. Just surrounded by mountains and a huge lake in the middle. Blue all around the edges. I don't think it shows as blue on the camera, but the edges are so blue all around. It's like, it's a, it's a light blue. It's beautiful. The sun's shining on part of it. And the light's just kind of reflecting off the bottom. So the right side just bluer than ever now. It's amazing. Amazing. You guys got to come up to the Onion Valley from uh, Independence. Just hike up here. Just see this. If you can't do the whole PCT, just this alone. It's uh, pretty amazing. There's not that much snow on this trail so far. But hey, look at that. Wow. This is the hike. We're hiking down the trail. Insane, right? This is the hike. This is what you see as you're hiking. I should put this away. We're still going down and we can see the valley down below and down, way down below is probably where Independence is way down on the floor. We're going there. I like being level with the clouds. Look at that. Check out this lake, folks. It just, it, there's a wall there, like if you just knock it down, this lake just gonna go whoosh. It looks like there's a little stream there, but pretty cool lake. It's not frozen. All that snow in the mountains melts and eventually turns into this waterfall. Pouring down, pouring down into this lake. Ice cold water. And it overflows and streams out the other way. And they're sideways. There's a couple that gave us a ride to Independence from, oh wait, the Bishop from Independence. So this is your cool van, decked out with the top. He could stand in it. He's like six something. It's awesome. They got the high clearance awning. They're good to go. It'd be so nice to have something like that. We are at Hostel California and Bishop for a few days until the post office opens. And they have bikes you could borrow to go to the grocery store. So you don't have to walk, well, I think like a 1.2 mile round trip. Now, which bike to ride? Hmm. I guess the easiest one to grab. All right. Someone. We're riding our. You got to spin the wheel backwards. You want to try? You want to turn? I'm used to going backwards. Are you not used? You want this one? <laughs> you want this one? I'll ride that one. <laughs> Are you thinking typical American doesn't know how to ride? Valente ice cream. I want that container. Let's get a vanilla caramel swirl. Here's my haul so far. A lot of this is just to eat over the next couple of days because we're taking two zeros. But I need this because I'm an old person. But uh, these are all you can eat. This will be gone in two days on the trail. For the container, butter, splitting it with someone else. Got some couscous bulk. You just mix a bunch in with Mountain House and it, you get extra calories. I think I should split that with some other people. Tons of candy bars. Some beef jerky, more beef jerky. I already have enough food for quite a while, so I'm gonna just bring um, mashed potatoes, four things of Far East couscous, Mediterranean curry, and stovetop. And that should be 
actually between these. That's four, di three dinners right there. More breakfast, and of course I gotta get some of that. And that, not much, not much cool or different than anybody else really. This is just to eat while we're here as well. But this bike, the chain keeps falling off because the wheel wobbles, the axle shot, and then the wheel then rubs against the this bar on the right. And then we got this bike over here that sideways rode. The right side of the rack is busted off down here. So this whole thing was leaning on the right, and then the tire was rubbing on this the whole time. Yep. That's why it was so hard to pedal. <laughs> Such a hard ride back. This one the chain's off too. We'll examine the next one. We don't need a rack so we could take something like this. Woo, what a trip. We finally survived the 1.7 mile bike ride over. It's quite an adventure. Our first bike I took had a flat tire like halfway over. So you have to go back and get another one. And that's where you order, right there. And here's the seating. It's a pretty cool place. Just don't shake the chair, the bench, or the table too hard. There are a lot of locals driving through here, so it's a busy place. We'll see how good the burger is. I ordered a Western burger with jalapeno. I'm at the Hostel California. This is our little deck area for where we are. And that's where we slept actually the first night. General seating area. There's the main building, and this is the dorm that we were in. There's just a bunch of beds. Four beds. That bottom one is mine, as you can tell by the tripod. And uh, we've got some lockers, but there's just not much space in there. And then, then there's a bathroom for more people. So there's still up to 12 people sharing this one bathroom. It's got a shower. It's pretty pretty nice, actually. It's $25 a night, so it's not too bad. We're spending two nights here. Yeah, three nights. <laughs> but uh, we've got electricity, and that's a big thing. And over there's all my stuff that was charging. Pretty messy, I know, but hey, we're working on it. It's another day. We're at Independence now, waiting for a hitchhike to get up to Onion Valley. A truck just pulled over and picked up three of us, but there are still four more remaining right now. Hopefully someone comes, but not too many cars are going up to Onion Valley right now. Bummer. Can't wait to get back in the mountains though. Hoping this guy picks us up. Ooh, we'll see. Sierras or? Yep, first time. Yeah. We're getting a ride oh in the car. Guys... Guy picked us up. Oh. There's my pack on my leg. Saturday morning as we were coming down, this parking lot was packed. It was completely packed, but now there's hardly anything. And it's Tuesday morning, we're going up Bullfrog Lake Trail, I guess. And we're gonna head over Kearsarge today. It's very warm. So, gotta get going there, I'm losing them. All right, we're heading up Kearsarge now. A little out of breath, I hope you understand. It's a parking lot where we came from. We actually sat in Independence for at least an hour and a half. Nobody going through at all. And then suddenly a brown sedan pulls over. And this uh, guy, he was, I forgot his name. I'm so sorry. Thank you for giving us a ride, but I'm so sorry. But he pulled over because he was going to do a five night trip out here. And he gave four of us a ride. Great guy. Turns out he actually recognized me. He didn't say anything until we got here and I was talking to him and he says, that's number two. Well, yeah, second instance, so that's cool. I hope you have fun and your daughter. I hope you have fun going out with him. He's a great guy and it seems like he really knows his backpacking gear. Way, way He did way more research than I did, so I would trust his uh, opinions on things. But we're going to keep going and we'll see how the weather is later. I remember this part. Three days ago when we came down, we had to slide on our butts and then it was kind of snow up to there, but it's all clear now and there's just like a little ramp. Snow is melting quickly up here. Yeah, look at the colors down below. 
It looks very thought out, but beautiful. This, these are the colors we we're looking for. Before it was a light blue because it was more ice, but now it's just like a turquoise. Maybe not. I don't know. It's darker than turquoise. It's beautiful on the edges. Blue green. Still a lot of snow coming down, melting down, but it's uh, it's really thought out. This is exactly what we've been hoping for, and that's why we're heading up to Glen Pass. We think it's thought out enough that we can make it much more easily than all the people who's saying how dangerous it is. So we'll we'll see soon enough, today or tomorrow. On Saturday, we saw a lot of people coming out. I think some of them were coming to camp up there. There's a nice flat area. You have to tamp, camp 25 feet away from water, so that looks good enough. And then there's like a trail that goes down to the edge. So I guess when the weather's nicer, they can go take a dip. But I bet they were camping right there. That'd be awesome to just drive up here and just do an overnight here and just, I don't know, just watch the lake. Hmm. I'm going to do that someday. Maybe. Taking some zeros at the hostel was nice and all, but there's so many people there. So many people that just wanted to drink and get high. and It's nice to be somewhere quiet. Hear birds chirping in the wind. So this is the part of the trail I came up. I'm still going up, and you can see the switchbacks. It goes way down, and it cuts down there. It's very steep. You can see right there there's a trail and then it goes all the way down that way. And then you can see the switch back down there too. And way down below is the lake too. But it's kind of cool up here finally. It was hot down there but listen to it. Just water, wind, and birds. And me. <laughs> I was way off. It was Heart Lake right there that I was looking at. Big Pothole Lake is the one that was frozen before. So, it looks like it's right over this rim right there. So we'll see it soon enough. So that was the one. I keep getting my flakes mixed up, my mountains mixed up. Ah, in case I sound weird talking, sometimes I, when I get tired, it's hard to talk. <laughs> Do you find that? Here's Big Pothole Lake, still frozen. Edges are blue. It's amazing how the camera just can't bring out the light blue vibrantness along the far melted edges. But, lots of snow. Maybe I'll check out the photos to see the difference in snow from three days ago. But the lake is still pretty frozen. That wasn't there though, I think it was all white. I don't know. It is getting cold up here though. I kind of want to put my pack down and get something warm on my neck, but too lazy. We'll get over to Kyrsar soon enough. I think it's right over there somewhere. And then uh, I think I'm going to head down and not wait for the rest of the group because it's going to be windy up there and have, wait at the intersection, which isn't too far down. So more switchbacks coming. And the trail goes to... Kearsar's Pass, a little over that snow. You can actually see some people out there looking down. This is the only part at all sketchy, but not. That's it. Hey everybody. Hi, what a difference uh, a couple of days makes. It's so nice here, yeah. We're not clocked in and cloud, the sun is shining on the lake. It was really nice. Yeah. You could see far in both directions. There's no fog in the valley anymore. No. Nice. All right, this is the guy that gave us a ride up. His name is actually Steve. I was so off. <laughs> it's ridiculous and it's beautiful up here. And you're going to tackle Glen Pass today? Um, probably not. I mean, this is a relaxing yeah. hike. That's true. So you're going to just camp somewhere down? Take the high route, camp somewhere along there. Okay. And, uh, yeah, we don't know what we're going to do. Tomorrow, 
Ray Lakes, hang out there, and then try to get into Sixty Lakes Basin. Okay. That sounds amazing. And explore a little bit. Relaxing, yep. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's what it's about. No hardcore through hikers. No. <laughs> We're like, we gotta get 15 miles a day at least. But uh, today is beautiful, and the sign doesn't have ice sticking out of it. It's sunny, and you can read the sign, and you can see all the lakes. And that one's even partially thawed. It is amazing out here today. Check this out. There's no ice on here at all. And it's dry. Dry, I know. Nothing. Oh, sorry. You'll see the photo. We're gonna head down now, but look at this wall of peaks right here. You can tell. It's so beautiful. And around the corner. Man, just so beautiful up here. All these lakes. Oh my gosh. We're heading down. We were gonna go down to the PCT, but we're hearing thunder quite often and there are really dark clouds in front of us and to the right of us. We're just going to find a first flat spot we can find and just camp out for the night. We're pretty close to Bullfrog but we don't want to keep walking when there's thunderstorm coming straight at us. So I don't know, first spot we'll be fine. We're going to definitely settle down just for tonight. We've got a few more miles to do tomorrow before Glen Pass but that's all right. We'll see what happens with this weather. We knew it was gonna rain today when we left. We do this because uh, on the first day we can do a little, deal with a little bad weather, and then we could be happy with all the good weather that comes afterwards. You gotta have a little bad before you know about all the good, right? I'm so squeaky. We still hear thunder, but it looks like the worst of the storms just blew to the east or blew to the north, away from us. Although there's more dark clouds coming. And we still hear a lot of thunder. Uh, we may wait a little bit longer till we find a good campsite. But I think we're safe for a few minutes at least.